too much. Um, if you want to uh, talk about us on Twitter and, and tweet things out, uh, you can use the hashtag retail apps down the bottom. Uh, you know, my my uh, user ID is Jay Schwent, and then obviously uh, include a period just so we can follow along and uh, be part of the conversation. Uh, so just so you can get a, a feel for who I am, uh, I'm the lead solutions architect here at Appirion, and uh, I help to uh, work with customers to develop great mobile experiences, uh, mostly in, in the business-to-business -business, uh, world, but also uh, we do some business-to-consumer as well. At the end of the day, we're looking to build uh, business apps that really uh, transform uh, and make these, uh, these devices sing and work for you. So some of the topics we're going to talk about today uh, are kiosks and how they can be used, uh, age verification, another application of uh, mobile devices, uh, loyalty programs, uh, consumer self-service, and talk about how uh, consumers are downloading apps themselves. Uh, we'll talk about comparison shopping uh, and, and what that threat really means to you uh, in the retail space. Uh, inventory management, another pain point, uh, the point of sale, uh, and how that can be transformed. And then finally, we'll touch on augmented reality. So the first thing I want to talk about is kiosks. Um, it's been one of those areas that really uh, has been transformed by the iPad. Uh, in years past, there have been various different attempts to build tablet computers uh, from um, a slew of different manufacturers. But it really wasn't until the iPad came out that the user experience went from being pen-based or, or with that uh, stylus to something that anybody could walk up and just use, utilizing their fingers. Um, with, the, uh, with, with tablets taking off the way they have, uh, it's, it's just a, a, great, um, a great device to be able to utilize in this form factor. Uh, uh, the kiosk can look uh, like you see here in this picture where it's on a podium, or they can be part of a much more elaborate integrated display. Uh, what can they be used for? Uh, one of the, the biggest things they can be used for is product recommendations. So take for example, you have a very, very complex product, or perhaps you have a tremendous catalog, a very deep catalog of products. How do you whittle down that product line to make it a, a, a palatable set of decisions for that consumer to uh, decide between. So one example that uh, I always like to use is, uh, is cars. So in, you know, if I was to go to a car show, there are hundreds if, if, uh, of cars to choose from, and it's a little overwhelming to the average consumer. So if I was able to produce a, uh, a very simple app that would let me enter criteria, such as, uh, you know, I'm looking for a four-door sedan. Uh, I'm looking for one that has built-in navigation. Well, instantly, with those two decisions, it takes hundreds of uh, possible uh, vehicles that I could purchase and whittles it down to maybe um, less than 100. And then maybe I put in my price uh, range that I'm looking to stay within, so on and so forth. This can apply to any business, I promise you. Um, We've recently built an app for, uh, for the wine industry where uh, you know, the typical consumer walks into a wine shop and they're overwhelmed. They can't even try the products before they have to buy them. Uh, how do they choose? And so uh, we were able to take you know, hundreds if not thousands of, of wine bottles, um, pull out their characteristics, and build uh, an engine that walks through. A great, great user story. Another thing you can use them for is, uh, is lead capturing. Uh, I recently went to uh, an event where uh, in order for me to go and take part in that particular um, event, I had to fill out a form on a tablet. And it can be a very simple form, it can be a more elaborate form, but it's a great way to ask users for their information, um, have them be, do it entirely on their own and not have to have that uh, a clumsy pen and paper process that has to later be transcribed. Um, a further thing you can use them for is demonstrations. So let's take, for example, you have a really, really complicated product. Um, 
an example I always like to, to use is like an MRI machine. Right? It's not retail necessarily, but um, everybody can understand that an MRI machine is this huge hunking piece of iron. And you can't haul it around to trade shows or, or to, uh, to doctor's offices to show them what it looks like. But what you can do is bring, um, you can have a device that shows off not only the, uh, the machine, what it looks like in 360 degrees, but um, you can have movies talking about what the user experience is, as well as what the end result um, of, the, uh, of utilizing that machine is. So the, the actual um, collateral that comes out. And then the, one of the other things that um, you can do with this is having an, uh, an e-catalog. Imagine you're a retailer like uh, like J. Crew, and you walk into the store. They uh, they have every you know they, they you find a jacket that you really like, but they don't have it in your size and your color. Well, one of the things you can do is have instead of having to call up on a telephone and talk to customer service and go through that really really painful process, you can have a catalog kiosk that's sitting in your store, and you can allow the users to uh, to go through that in, that entire checkout process of exactly what it's looking for, but you know that that user is in your store and you can honor any in-store discounts that you have at that point. So the one thing I will tell you to take away with kiosks is attraction is everything. You want to make, you want to have something playing on that kiosk when it's not being utilized to get people interested to come over and take a look. So show a movie, show something that is flashy or something that's going to get them to be like, hey, what's that other than it's just another iPad? Okay. Moving on to age verification. Uh, so one of, one of the, uh, the cool things you can do with, with these iDevices is be able to use additional uh, hardware. Uh, there are driver's license scanners on the market where you can scan a driver's license or a, another form of ID potentially that will allow you to identify the user, you have a picture on that ID, uh, and then you, with that uh, identification, you can um, pull out their age, make sure they're at the right age level for whatever you're purchasing, or they're attempting to purchase, um, or you can get their mailing address as well. So the first place that this comes in, into, uh, into being is, is where you want to reduce your risk. Um, when you are selling goods uh, that are controlled uh, substances such as alcohol or guns or pharmaceuticals, you really need to reduce your risk up front as much as possible. So um, this is a perfect example of utilizing these devices in that, in that, uh, in that area. Uh, it also can be a second form of identification for uh, the point of sale. So let's take, for instance, you swipe a credit card. Uh, I, some retailers have gotten to, into the habit of mandating that they take the credit card and they get a, a driver's license or another form of identification and matching it up because that uh, reduces any fraudulent activity. So you can do that with instead of one swipe and one you know, match up to two swipes. And that just makes it faster and faster. Uh, you can, because the driver's license specifically has the, the, uh, the person's address on it, you can use it to gather their address for a mailing list. Say, for instance, you had a, a checkout counter and you say, sign up for a mailing list. Well, you know, they could type in their email address, they could type in their whole mailing address, or they could literally take their ID, swipe it in, half a second, on the wrong way. At the end of the day, with age verification, everything boils down to speed. Speed, speed, speed. So we want to make it fast and easy. Another great uh, thing that we can do in the retail space is loyalty programs. Um, in terms of loyalty programs, uh, one of the things you always want to do with them is, is utilize them to get people to come back into your, into your store, back into your, uh, your restaurant, and coming back for more. Keep them loyal, obviously. Um, so it's all about incentives. Well, one of the things you can do by utilizing apps to encourage uh, loyalty is utilizing push notifications. So we want to stay top of mind with people, and email is a somewhat effective channel to do so, but obviously we deal with spam filters and everything else. Well, one of the beauties of push notifications um, is that it's almost a guaranteed channel to get to that end user. 
Um, so it's a really great way to stay top of mind. The one thing we want to do, though, is make sure that we're not overburdening the user with too many messages um, or else they might go and delete your app. So you have to, it's a fine line, of course, with anything else, but it's a great way to, um, to, to stay in, you know, to, to keep it in active uh, engagement. The other thing you can do with, with mobile apps for loyalty is give you the consumers control. You can give them control for um, both uh, util utilizing uh, the car to, to gain value in certain different ways. So maybe they come to your restaurant and they order the same thing every time and they want to be able to, um, to gain value by every visit. Or maybe they want to gain value by how much they are um, spending at a given visit. And you, know, you can control that or you can give the consumers the control to do it. Um, we can also include in, include in your apps virtual barcodes. Um, some apps have gone the way of utilizing QR codes for this, where each user is given a unique QR code, and then at the point of sale, that QR code is scanned directly off of the device. Um, with By doing that, it makes it like a virtual card. It doesn't have to be limited to a QR code, however. It can be any uh, code, any barcode that can be scanned by a traditional barcode scanner. Uh, another cool thing that you can do with these is incorporate stored value into these loyalty programs. Um, so if you go to your favorite, uh, say, chain restaurant on a regular basis, let the users uh, store you know, value on that card and use that as the point of sale. Uh, and, a, and an excellent example of that is Starbucks, where uh, if you have a Starbucks card, you can add value to your Starbucks card. They'll give you discounts um, for doing so. Say you load $20 onto your card, you get $25 worth of product. Um, I don't need to go into the details of why you would want to do a stored value card, but by incorporating it into the app, you also give the user the ability to add value and manage that value as they go. So they get uh, an instantaneous read of how much balance they have, as well as an ability to replenish that value. So by doing it all within the app, it's always with them. It makes it super simple. Um, and the last thing on this topic is making the rewards be dynamic and individual. It's really, really important. So instead of making your rewards very, very generic, like you can get one free menu item, think about it in terms of um, looking at the past purchase history of that consumer and how we can determine what are some trends and behaviors and how we can maybe encourage some additional behaviors to get them to purchase more. Um, an example would be, you know, I'll go back to Starbucks. Uh, this person comes into Starbucks, they order the same cup of coffee three times a week. Once every quarter, they order a scone to go with it. Well, if I'm seeing a pattern of once a quarter they're ordering a scone, what if I was to provide them with an incentive, maybe uh, half off a scone when purchased with your coffee, once a week. That may be the tipping point to get them to start doing it more and become habit forming. So by making these offers be really, really individual and dynamic to that consumer, it's such a powerful concept. Um, at the end of the day, everybody hates carrying 50 of these cards in their wallets or their, or their purses, etc., uh, or even on their keychains. By making it virtual, you can accomplish all of these things and lighten your load. Moving into the next area, consumer self-service. Um, with these types of apps, these are apps where the consumer would download it from the, the iTunes App Store or the Android Marketplace or whatever, and they would be able to uh, work, you know, find, number one, find where the locations of your store are, check their hours, that type of thing. But ideally, you want to be able to allow the user to do the entire checkout process through your, uh, through your app. How do you approach this? Well, you want to think like your customer. If, your cust if, if, you, if you put yourself in their shoes and say, um, in, in three different modalities. One, I'm in the store. What, how am I going to find the product I'm looking for in the store? And how am I going to get in and out as quickly as possible? Uh, two, 
I'm looking for the store. I'm driving around. I'm trying to find it. So you have to have that store locator, store hours, that type of thing. And three is um, everywhere else, at home on the couch or on the go. And, oh, by the way, oh, yeah, it would be really great if I, I remembered to pick this up at the store or, or that type of thing. Um, there's so much in this area that you can do. Um, I, I just love to point to Apple um, as, as being the model for how to do this right. And they are really, really pushing the envelope. Um, in their stores, if, if you're familiar, they have uh, personal shopping, they have the Genius Bar, they have one-to-one -one sessions that you can sign up for, um, either ahead of time or when you get to the store, you can put your name into a virtual waiting list to talk to somebody if there's a, if there's a queue. Uh, you can do an entire checkout process, whether you're in the store or out of the store. Um, and then you can even say, I want to pick up the, uh, the particular thing I ordered in the store or have it shipped to me, all within the app. They do such an amazing job. Um, use this as a model for your, your best case scenario, where, where you can really be getting to. Um, at the end of the day, though, start small. Get an app out there that works for you and iterate and make it better over time. Even Apple didn't start with all of this day one. They've been inter uh, iterating over time, and that's just the best way to get started and get it out there. Next, let's talk about the, the, the real dirty term here in retail, which is comparison shopping. Um, here's the reality. It's happening on your sales floors today. There are people who have smartphones, and they are shopping you in your own stores. Uh, it used to be that if you went to a retail establishment, you own them. You know, it's just a matter of closing that sale. Now, somebody can go to your store and then pull out their iPhone or, or whatever device using a technology like a red laser or things that are built into um, an app like Shop Savvy, for example. They can comparison shop you on price. So if you have the same product that 100 other people have, well, guess what? Unless your price is roughly the same and, and there's no other differentiations, there's a chance they're just going to walk out of the store and order it when they get home. So how do you combat this? Well, obviously you can compete on price, but that's potentially a losing battle. Um, one of the things you can do is differentiate yourself on the products that you carry, uh, as well as the service that you offer in your stores. These are much, much bigger than developing apps and, and, and that type of thing. But it's really a, a strategy and, 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 uh, and shift that needs to be understood. Um, if you have the highest prices and you carry the same product as everybody else, chances are, uh, as this type of technology becomes more prolific, uh, it's going to be a losing battle. So you want to um, start thinking in, in terms of that. Um, you know, with, with the advent of the internet, it's easy for anybody to get anything, anywhere, at any time. Um, so another thing that you can do beyond you know, sort of changing your business model slightly is start to manage your presence in these apps. So a lot of these apps are social, and by being social, they allow people to talk about, you know, like here's a, here's a coupon for, doing, um, you know, for buying this at this shop and that shop, so on and so forth. Um, if you are actively managing your presence, the products that you carry, the, uh, you know, how you appear in these apps, then you can control and understand what that end consumer is going through and react to it and, and show them that you care and you, you, know, you have that level of customer service. It's an area that very few retailers are even thinking about right now because it's more or less in its infancy, but... It's something that's out there, and I don't see it going away anytime soon. So I would say get used to it and figure out a, a great way to react to it. The next topic is inventory management. Everybody hates inventory. It is one of those necessary evils that you just have to do. You just have to be able to know what's in your stores, know what's, what's out there. Um, so one of the things you can do is utilize these devices, which are pocketable. No longer are these, these big guns, you know, where there, there's no way you could, you know, have it in you. You have to have them on these chargers and there are these proprietary, really expensive devices. 
Now you can utilize uh, a small wrapper piece of hardware that has a 2D or 1D barcode scanner built in. Um, yes, you could theoretically use like a, a software solution like Red Laser with a built-in camera on the device, but I'll tell you that while that works great for consumers who have time on their hands, it doesn't work great for inventory where you want to be able to scan hundreds and hundreds of products really, really fast with, with a lot of accuracy. So having that little bit of extra custom hardware, um, or I should say off-the-shelf hardware, but uh, purpose-built hardware really makes a difference. It still keeps the device pocketable, which is really cool. The other thing you can do um, is introduce the notion of gameplay into inventory management. I know this sounds ludicrous, but think about it in terms of, by, of providing incentives to your employees. Maybe you do inventory once a week, you know, during off hours. Maybe you do it, um, you know, during, um, you know, in, in the middle of the day, but you're, you're assigning one person and dedicating that person to it for hours upon hours. Well, what if everybody on the floor had this and they had a couple of minutes of downtime? They can scan a couple of things to keep your inventory updated and they can do it all the time by introducing gameplay you can tell the user how many things they've scanned, how, what was the most uh, recent time it was scanned, and you can get an idea of uh, you know, how often they're doing it. If you, in, if you include the notion of incentives into this, where I am the employee who scanned the most items today, the most items this week, um, my, my, uh, my inventories have come out to be the most accurate, while you know, playing that against sales numbers or anything else that you have to juggle, you can really kind of make it a, an almost a fun game for people in the store. You, know, you can say, you know, the person who does the most amount of inventory, um, you know, with, within, you know, this week is going to win, you know, an extra $50 worth of merchandise to, you know, for whatever they want. Um, so it's a crazy far out there idea, but it might be crazy enough to work. Um, Another thing around this whole thing is you want to make it fast. That's why we have the purpose-built hardware. Uh, with this, with this hardware and the software on your on your phone, it being always connected, you can make uh, inventory be a live thing instead of being this always out of sync, never really up to date, um, sort of a problem that everybody has to solve. Make it live, and your whole inventory management becomes much, much easier and more real-time. And then last but not least, going back to the gameplay, make it fun. At the end of the day, use apps and use these devices to reduce the pain involved in the inventory because nobody likes it. All right, let's talk about point of sale. So this is an area that is, is really, really cool. Uh, I'm sure almost everybody on this call has probably heard of Square. Uh, Square was a it is an, uh, a small little device that you can purchase. It plugs into the headphone jack of uh, a mobile device and allows you to process credit card transactions as an individual or as a company, but mostly as an individual. That works great if you are um, processing very very few uh, transactions, but as soon as you want to start to process uh, a much more higher um, frequency of transactions, you need something a little bit more robust. So what I'm showing down here is, is a very simple, um, easy approach where it's a small dongle that uh, plugs into the dock connector on your phone. It allows the, uh, the transaction to be encrypted between this device and the, and the piece of software, uh, the, uh, the app that you've written. And it enables it to be very, very fast and, and read, read reading credit cards and accurate more accurate than you'll find with something like Square, where it's just really tiny and kind of rinky dink and is not going to stand up to the battle of uh, constantly swiping cards. Uh, the other option that you typically will see beyond uh, a plug-in dongle is another wraparound case like I've shown on the previous slides. What this comes down to, however, is empowering your entire sales force to make, to, to process payments. So, if you've ever been to an Apple store, it's another great example. Every employee in that store has a mobile device on them and can take your money. The more people who can take your money, guess what? The more sales. 
lines at a sales register in an Apple store do not exist. That is a very, very good thing. Uh, so the, if you can get every one of your employees in a department store to have one of these things as they're walking around and they're helping a customer, hey, would you like me to check you out? Sure. They can check you out right on their device, swipe your card, and they're on their way. Another cool side effect of this is because we don't have printers to print receipts so much anymore, we have paperless transactions. So what you can do is have the user enter their email address and then and they get an email immediately after their transaction is processed with their signature, which they use their finger, finger to sign on the, on the uh, phone. It's automatically digital. They'll love that because they have a record of it forever instead of losing that receipt. And they can incorporate uh, that into their monthly processing of you know, how they manage their bills. Last but not least, like I had mentioned, no lines, no waiting. Consumers get in and out, and they love it. So, at the end of the day, what does it come down to? It's all about getting everyone on the dance floor to make all of this stuff happen. No longer do you dedicate people to, uh, to being behind the cash register or being on the floor. Everyone's on the floor. The cash register runs around with them. All right, and last but not least, I wanted to talk about augmented reality. This is a really, really cool technology. Um, it's at its very, very early stages of, of practical applications. Um, you may have there's there's different um, applications of virtual of augmented reality, but um, one of the really cool things in retail is the, is the notion of virtual fitting rooms. So I have an example of two different um, virtual fitting rooms, if you will. One is uh, shows in the upper right hand corner. These ladies uh, who are in a public space are able to virtually try on clothing over their existing clothing. Um, obviously, you're probably not going to be doing that out and about. But if you were to imagine if you and your friends were home and you, you know you were thinking about this you know new dress for a, for a night out, well, you can just try them on virtually. What a great way to uh, to get your product and and really see what it looks like on you. Uh, another example is uh, in the bottom left, it's, uh, it's being able to try on a watch uh, as if it was on your wrist. And this is, both of these work by under, outlining the individual, and, or in this case like a wrist, looking for that, that shape of a, of a hand um, you know, and, and the arm coming out of it, and then superimposing the, whatever object that you're trying to sell right on there. So. I mean, especially in the case of like the watch that's down here, unbelievable um, how realistic it does look. And as the user turns their wrist, they'll actually be able to see the watch rotate around as if they were really trying it on. So it really brings these products, which are two-dimensional on a website today, to life that the consumer can almost physically sort of touch and interact with. Um, so when it comes to this stuff, it's on the very early side of things. What I would uh, recommend to you is experiment. See what's out there. See what sticks. See what people like uh, and don't like. And I think if nothing else, if you were to put an app out there that, that demonstrates this, you'd get a lot of buzz. It's, it, it could be nothing more than a, a PR grab, but at the end of the day, it's, it's something that's really cool. It's going to get people talking about it. Hey, did you check out this app and see how cool this is? That's the kind of reaction you want to your brand and really um, demonstrate that you are thinking well outside of the box. So uh, getting back to the topics that we covered, uh, I kind of threw in a, a little hidden thing. Um, you know, I always like to use the term of cha-ching uh, when I'm talking about retail. So I, I couldn't really spell out to Ching, but I said, uh, say Ching, uh, pulling together all of these various different topics. If, if you're a, a company that's really forward thinking, you're able to pull all of these together, you're going to win. At the end of the day, uh, your consumers are marching toward a completely um, self-service and, and um, tech savvy demographic. And the more you can be in front of that and foster that amongst your consumers, the better off you're going to be. So check off as many letters on this list as you possibly can. 
Um, but start somewhere. Start somewhere that is your lowest hanging fruit and get going.